Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, we've been heads down making sure season 17 is poised to rock and roll and recovering from that whopper of a twab last week. I'm not gonna lie, I really struggled writing this. Only because the previous one by DMG dropped lots of solid info about the sandbox changes, weapon tweaks, and more. This twab will be less extensive, but we hope you enjoy what we've got lined up to talk about this week. That, and we still have a few surprises up that proverbial sleeve. But we want to keep some aspects of what is next under wraps. We don't want to ruin the surprise after all. This week, we're talking about the return of our yearly tradition, which is the Guardian Games. Each year, Warlocks, Hunters, and Titans go head to head to prove who is the boss, even though it's clearly Titans. Yes! Oh my god, Hippie's now my favorite. Now, Hunters took gold last year, so Warlocks and fellow Titans, it's time to suit up. This year, we're changing things up a bit. We'll also be talking more about Season 17 reward changes, pool rotations, and more. So without further ado, let's get into it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hunters, you won technically last year, but understand, it was a tech technical win, not an actual win. Just mull that over. Guardian Games and beyond. Eyes up, Guardian. It's that time of year again. Next week, Guardian Games 2022 will kick off on May the 3rd and it's free for all players of Destiny 2. This event is a tradition and it's the perfect excuse to get into that friendly and competitive spirit. While the spirit of the annual class battle remains the same, Guardian Games 2022 does have a few changes that players can look forward to. First things first, what determines the winner? Much like previous Guardian Games, participants will be tasked with depositing those hard-earned medallions at the podium in the tower. You know the drill. Medallions can be earned by completing certain activities and mini quests called contender carts and platinum carts. These activities are designed to be flexible, so if you got the time, we've got those shiny medallions. Now, higher tier medallions, which grant more points, can be earned in activities like raids, dungeons, competitive PvP, trials of Osiris, and survival, and seasonal activities like PsyOps Battlegrounds on higher difficulty. Lower tier medallions, which are important to dropping content like Gambit, Vanguard Strikes, Quick Play, and other Throne Roll activities at the standard difficulty level. Gold medals can be earned by completing contender cards in easier activities, whereas platinum medals drop when platinum cards are completed on tougher content. Basically, play what you want, snatch those pinnacles, and scoop up some shiny medallions to bank at the tower. But wait, there's more. Something new coming to Guardians games this year is strike scoring, which factors in playtime only for the Guardian games playlist. Additionally, we've got strike medals, which are designed to reward players for pulling off some pretty impressive feats, like taking out a ton of enemies with a fancy little combat jig like Shatter. This should also help with players that feel like they are being matched with others that just zip through the strikes. Why rush through when you can score some additional points by going ham and showing the bad guys what's up? Now there are two Guardian Games playlists, training and competitive. And when you play matters. Let's break it down. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the place to be is in the training playlist. Here you can earn practice scores, the combined score of your entire fire team. On Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, it's time to get sweaty in the competitive playlist. This is where you'll earn exciting rewards. Rewards. Players can earn buffs in the recreational, training, and competitive playlists by ranking bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. These last until the next weekly reset. You can use these buffs in regular Vanguard Ops playlists. Now, players will also be able to unlock torches to light in the tower based on their highest score past a certain threshold. For example, lighting the bronze, silver, gold, and platinum torches grants rewards and a glow that can be seen on the right shoulder of a guardian's armor, so you can feel extra pretty. Lighting the torch is monumental when it comes to the Guardian Games experience. And we want Guardians and Destiny 2 to feel the significance in game. For any personal medallion deposits, there's some more glow action on the way with an accompanying left shoulder glow as well. Any progress is an accomplishment and we want you to feel proud of the time you put in. All right. I like to the split there and play this, right? So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're just going to get kind of an idea of how to even do Guardian Games and then eventually migrate into the competitive playlist for Guardian Games. Now we also have a look at the armor. Oh, actually though, look at the Hunter. The Titan looks dope, man. And the warlock as well. I gotta say, fellas, the armor is looking fire. Now, the overall structure for Guardian Games is designed to focus on skill level, meaning that higher scores are achieved by taking on tougher activities, defeating enemies, staying alive, and completing an activity in a timely manner. New bounties have also been thrown in for this year's festivities to help players feel inspired to engage in the Guardian Games Strike and Battleground playlist. A little nudge for players to engage with the event-specific Vanguard medal system, if you will. Now, since there is nifty new content this year, we've also updated our contender and platinum cards as well as our medallion rewards for completing those new challenges. New raid? Check. Legendary and master lost sectors? Check. New seasonal content? Yep, also check. You can choose to spend your time in the newer content, but it's not required to participate. More options, more ways to play. Keep it fun, keep it fresh, but also keep the core spirit alive for what Guardian Games is, and that's a community-wide effort to show off some class love. Now let's get to the rewards, shall we? What are they? For those that have an affinity for submachine guns, the title is a new legendary sub-archetype 
that will be available during the event. According to Jason Briggs, a test lead at Bungie, the title is a Hake Void SMG for the energy slot that is an aggressive frame with a unique origin perk called Classy Contender, which grants class ability energy with final blows from this weapon. It has a wide range of perks that it can roll with, and players will have many opportunities to earn fully mastered drops with double perks in both the third and fourth columns. Ah, all right. Honestly, this is a good counter. I know like Cold Front, nobody's necessarily crazy about Cold Front, but that's the other 750 legendary that's in our kinetic slots. It's nice to have one here that's void for our energy slot. And I know we have like Ikelos and stuff, but considering we're still in void 3.0 right now, and we have things like Volatile Flow, this would be a great weapon to take advantage of that. Now, it's interesting that you're actually going to be getting class ability energy with each final blow. We literally just talked about balance and PvP and how class ability energy is really the issue. But whatever, hunters, you build a roly-poly as much as you want. Now, class items can also be earned, as well as another shot at air apparent and its exotic catalyst. So the sandbox is about to get a little more interesting during the Guardian game celebration. Oh, and did we mention that the players that score in the top 10% at the end of the event will get a spiffy new emblem to show off. Yeah, we've got that too. Look at that. All right, so instead of just rewarding the winning squad, they're actually going to be rewarding the top 10%. Now, I know a lot of you are like, yo, it's just going to be the streamers that win. Actually, no. There's like an underground medallion farming squad for Guardian games, and you're going to see them because they go ham every single season. All that I ask is that these unknown sweaty pledge their allegiance to Titans this year. Now, the emblem for the players that score in the top 10% will be awarded after we combine their highest scores from each week. When the event ends, the combined score will determine who made it to the top of the player base for Guardian games. This will unlock a special triumph and boom, emblem awarded. With every player having their own unique play style, most have a main class. This is awesome, but does mean that not every class has the same number of Guardians competing for the Guardian games win. Last year's games included a 10% catch-up buff that allowed for each class to have a fighting chance chance regardless of how many players are in that same class pool. And this was to encourage players to feel like they have equal footing regarding competition. And it seemed to work out pretty well in the end, but there's always room to make improvements. So this year, each team's score multiplier will start with whatever value they ended up during last year's festivities. Titans having placed third, the most days will have the largest boost. Warlocks with the second most in third place will get a moderate boost. And Hunters having placed third the least number of times will get the smallest boost. A little added bonus includes a minor 4% bump to their multiplier for the class in second place with a 10% bump for those in third place. All right. Titans were starting off strong. Dude, this almost feels like the draft, right? Like Titans, we gave up first and second place last year just to prep ourselves for this year. Now we heard you like the grabs in the last swap. So we're throwing one in here for good measure to break down participation rates of the three classes since the launch of the Witch Queen seen below. This graph breaks down the time spent for all three classes ramping up towards this year's Guardian Games since the launch of the Witch Queen, giving us a little insight into where everyone is at these days and what sort of class engagement we're expecting to see. Ah, look at that. Hunters, Warlocks. Look at Titans down there, man. My lord. You dang right we don't need a nerf, Lorely. We need all the help we can get. Now, as mentioned in previous twabs, Guardian Games 2022 kicks off on May the 3rd and will run until May the 24th. So get that gear you're ready and make your fire team proud. Guys, I actually cannot wait till next week. I've got some stuff cooking in anticipation for this Guardian Games. It's going to be hot. I'm telling you right now, you're going to want to be a Titan this year. I promise. Now, Guardian Games Cup, a new way to win. With Guardian Games on the horizon, we're excited to see the three classes battle out once more, but that doesn't mean that the games have to be limited to just in-game. Oh, nay, nay. We're very excited to announce that Guardian Games Cup is happening at the same time, and it's a brand new out-of-game event that ups the ante a bit and for a good cause. So what is Guardian Games Cup? We're pretty community focused here at Bungie, if you couldn't tell. So we thought it would be fun to task some hardcore guardians with the hefty responsibility of being a shining beacon for their class. Which class will claim that podium stop spot? We'll have to wait and see. But Guardian Games Cup takes that anticipation and brings it into the real world with the help of some competition loving creators. From May the 3rd to May the 24th, some of your favorite streamers will team up from around the world. A whopping 42 teams across 14 territories in total. Duking it out to show why Titans are the best. Oh, wait, I can't say that. Why, insert your favorite class here, deserves that shiny gold medallion. The top team will even win a custom digital piece by Gamma Trap. Oh my God. But why stop there? Guardian Games Cup will be yet another amazing charity initiative with the Bungie Foundation. And because of that, there will be some prizes both in and out of Destiny 2 for participants to enjoy when donations are made to direct relief. One of those prizes includes a rad piece of artwork from the incredible talented Furian Art. And I'm hoping saying that right, but God dog it, the art that is here 
Holy hell. I don't even know. I don't know which one I like more. Maybe Lorley. Actually, the Yeet Titan one looks really good. Oh, now we'll have more to share soon, including which teams you can cheer on as they go for gold. It'll be a good time filled with friendly competition and camaraderie. We hope you join us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's gonna be fun, fellas. Trust me. A little more in-game weapon love. With a new season comes new rewards. The next season is gonna be a doozy, but we want you to experience the story and its surprises on your own. No spoilers here. That being said, we did want to share some of the rewards that are coming down the pipeline. With season 17, the richer weapons available when ranking up will be the heavy machine gun, Chain of Command. Now, like previous seasons, this reputationally driven reward will come with a unique ornament that depends on the vendor. All right, so you got like the Gambit one, the Crucible one, as well as the Vanguard one. Kind of has like a Thunderlord look to it, right? Is this going to be the 21% Delirium replacement? I don't know, fellas. Let's not get our hopes up. Again, Bungie's mentioned before in the past that the goal for ritual weapons are just to be stepping stones for us to get that in-game loot, right? But sometimes things slip through the cracks, right? Now, for those itching for new playlist weapons for Crucible, Riptide Fusion Rifle, Gambit, Deadweight Shotgun, and Vanguard Strident Whistle Bow. Now, the Nightfall drops includes both Standard and a Dead Virgin's what? Horace Lee's Pulse Rifle and DFA Hand Cannon. Oh my God. Fellas, Horace Lee's is such a good Pulse Rifle. Such a good Pulse Rifle. I am so excited to see what new traits are on this weapon. You want to talk about a deadly rapid fire frame pulse? Horace Lee's will hands down beat all of them. Trust me on this. And DFA was, in my opinion, neck and neck as like the best hand cannon back inside of Year One of Destiny 2. You had like Better Devils, a couple other ones in there, but DFA, man, was fantastic. It's an excellent gun model. It's super consistent and it's unique. This is a gun model that's extremely unique. So I'm excited to see DFA here. And finally, for Trials of Osiris, the Forgiveness Sidearm, as well as the Burden of Guilt Fusion Rifle. The Messenger Pulse Rifle and Shaira's Wrath will be leaving the Season 17 pool. That's right, fellas. If you don't have God rolls for those weapons, please do get them. Even if Desperado is getting a nerf, still get it anyways on Messenger. Now, Season 16's weapons will be shifting over into the standard loot pools with the Crisis Inverted Hand Cannon in the Crucible, as well as the Herod C Auto Rifle in Gambit and the Vanguard Shotgun for Tisma. We'll have more to share about Season 17 closer to the launch date, but for now, these are the pew pews to look forward to. All right, again, so excited about Horus Lease and DFA. Like that right there gets me so hyped. And a debt version of Horus Lease, my lord. Outside of that, we do have a hot fix going out next week. Also, the Broken Barrier Emblem has been added to accounts for players who participated in the Festival of the Lost armor ornament vote for Team Monsters versus Team Max. Be looking out for that emblem, guys. And a number of known issues regarding Nova Warp and Nova Pulse, okay? Now, as a final note here from Hippie, while not a novel like last week's Twops Adventure, we hope you enjoy what we showed off. Before we let you go, we have just one more thing for Trials of Osiris lovers out there. The next Trials Lab will be directly impacted by you. On May the 3rd, players will receive an email from Bungie that will allow you to vote for which map you'd like to see in the next rotation. On May the 5th, the vote will close and the winning map will be revealed in the next week's TWAP. Am I best? Rule Paul's drags voice. You're a winner, baby. The voting poll will look like this. You'll click on a picture of the map that you want to play next, and then that's the one vote towards the next feature battlefield for Trials of Osiris. All right, so we're going to have Boss Talk, Altar of Flames, as well as Fragment. No lie, guys. Please don't choose Fragment. I'm just saying. I just have a distinct feeling it won't play well. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. I wouldn't mind Boss Talk, though. I like that map. I will say this. As far as the voting features go for everything, like, I love this. The only thing I wish they would do is have in-game votes, right? Like, instead of us going to an email and actually selecting the map, it'd be nice if we can just select it in-game. Just have a pop-up, hit everyone's feed whenever they log in, and voila, you can choose the map or choose the set of armor, amongst other things in future votes. Again, though, it's incredible that Bungie's even including us in this and not just making decisions completely on their own accord. Hopefully, one day we'll get to that point, though, where these votes will take place inside of Destiny 2 itself. And maybe there can even be like a board at the tower, right? Where you go up to it and you actually select whatever's on the vote panel. Well, guys, that is your twelve for this week. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Guardian Games is right around the corner, which I'm very excited to jump into. Honestly, though, again, I'm shook, man, that we're getting DFA and Horus Elise as a debt weapons. Hot damn. Hype! Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.